Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combat tutorial video, this time another World Chalice combat tutorial video, just something that's a little bit updated for the current state of affairs in the Yu-Gi-Oh! format. This is a combo sequence that I'm going to be showing you with Venus plus World Legacy World Chalice as a two-card play, a two-card combo, literally Venus plus World Legacy World Chalice, no additional cards, and what it yields you is it yields you all of this. A Kyoto Waterfront that was searched, Gamma Seal on the field. Firewall Dragon that is live for its bounce, as well as an Ingirsu and an Orm just chilling to be extra monsters on the field, extra oppressive force, and a five card hand at the end of your combo sequence because you drew two off Ningirsu and your card, uh, your hand was only a two card combo, resulting in you having three additional cards that didn't even need to be used. So why would you do a combo like this over something like a Topologic Gumblar Dragon combo where you can, you know, take four cards out of your opponent's hand and end on like, taking four cards out of your opponent's hand and then ending on like a Trigate Wizard? You would do this sort of combo, and that's the theory behind my reasoning for doing this, is you would do this sort of combo against danger decks, danger variants. Those decks are growing in popularity from event to an event on a pretty rapid basis, actually, because of the FTK variant and all that sort of stuff. And going second, you can't get Gumblard because your hand is full of stuff, full of discard fodder that would just get effect. So it's something you really don't want to be messing around with uh, with this deck. You really don't want to be comboing for like five minutes and then you make the Gumblar and your opponent discards two dangers or a danger and a dark world monster and then you just cry on the inside. That's something you really don't want to be dealing with. So what this combo is going to show is an alternative way for you to play World Chalice going first with two card combos that sort of take a step backwards in terms of the theory with the deck in terms of we're going back to Gamma Seal and putting that on the board where that has been sort of outdated in the past couple of months because of Gumblar Dragon plays being more reliable but this sort of updates those theories with ways to make Gamma Seal a more reliable engine, not needing you to draw the waterfront. Instead, you get to pinpoint search it and do all that sort of stuff with various two-card plays. So that is what I'm going to be showing you in this video, as well as what I will get into more details on in some possible future combo tutorials to show you the different variations of how these combos work. But so, with that out of the way, this is the ending board. This is what we're going to work our way back towards. Let me show you how this combo works. Alright, so like I previously stated, this combo is just going to be a pure two-card combo involving just the Agent of Creation Venus and World Legacy World Chalice and no additional cards. It is going to access Kyoto Waterfront, which will search Gamma Seal and summon it with five counters. You will draw two cards off Ningirsu, and you'll end up with a live Firewall. And using only these two cards for the combo, you will end with a five-card hand, and you'll have five cards on board for an overall plus five at bare minimum if you're just doing this two-card combination of plays. But basically, why would you want to do this play over the Gumblar play that we've uh, that we've established over the past couple of months? Obviously, because of danger monsters being something that is going to be only rising in popularity in the uh, metagame as we get more of its support waves. But even now, Danger Dark World as a deck is rising in popularity from event to an event. So you really don't want to be Gumblaring those decks. And so you can kind of get away with doing this as an option for the deck, especially considering that most people's hand trap lineups are things that don't really interact with Magical Midbreaker Field anyway. So we can just sort of get away with not running that card anymore in the uh, in the option of playing this package instead to try and give ourselves a better danger matchup. But anyway, combo starts with normal summoning Venus, getting your three shine balls out of your deck. And then from here, you're going to link away with the Venus and two shine balls into summon sorceress up here. Now, I'm working on the left hand side of the board because I have nightmare Phoenix. I need to summon here to point this way. I need to work from the left hand side to the right hand side of my board. If you were playing Nightmare Cerberus instead, you'd work on the right hand side of the board and work to the left. Or if you didn't play either Nightmare Phoenix or Cerberus and instead played a more generic card that pointed double uh, double arrows sideways like Proxy Dragon or Binary Sorceress, it doesn't matter what side of the field you're working on when you start the combo. But just something that I felt like I should bring up because I like to explain all of the details of how these things work to you so you have a better understanding. But so, you're going to link the last Shine Ball away into Imduk the World Chalice Dragon. You're going to immediately tribute the Imduk for World Legacy World Chalice using the additional normal summon that it grants you. And then from here, you're going to use the Summon Sorceress effect targeting the World Legacy World Chalice that is in its zone. Now what we're going to do is we're going to summon a machine out of our deck. It's an old one from Abyss Rising called Planet Pathfinder. And what this card does is it allows you to tribute it from your field to search for a field spell card from your deck and add it to your hand. Now we could activate that effect right now and tribute it as cost, but its effect is being negated by Summon Sorceress, so it would not search the card. So we're going to have to circumvent that a bit later, but that's okay. We will. That's the entire point of this combo sequence. But so now, as much as I would love to make Eeb here, these are both machines. Eeb requires two different types and two different attributes, so we can't make Eeb. So we're going to instead have to go with the World Legacy World Chalice and the Planet Pathfinder into Nightmare Phoenix over here, which is what I mentioned earlier. 
And then from here, your World Legacy World Chalice effect in Grave is going to trigger because it was Tribute Summoned, summoning Lee the World Chalice Fairy from your deck and World Chalice Guard Dragon from your deck. Now, Guard Dragon needs to be summoned in your center monster zone. It cannot go anywhere else for this combo to work in the form I'm showing it. Lee can go wherever you want it to be. And now from here, your Lee's effect will trigger to search, and you will search another World Legacy World Chalice to your hand. It doesn't really matter what card you search, I just always search World Legacy World Chalice because if I'm forced to end on it, it's better to end on because it is a form of disruption than any other card would be, like a second Guard Dragon, or a World Chalice Vanilla, or another Lee, or whatever. If there's some instance where you're ending on this card on the field, it is still an interaction disruption form with your opponent's extra deck summons, so like that's really like the better option to go for, as well as... It's like a better card to thin your deck out of, because they have graveyard searching capabilities and stuff like that. But so, carrying on, you're going to link away the Lee, and you're going to link away the Summon Sorceress that's here, into Firewall Dragon, next to the Nightmare Phoenix. And then from here, you're going to link away with the Guard Dragon that the Firewall points to, into Link Karibo on top of the Firewall Dragon. Now, at this point, you have a monster in your hand to legally trigger Firewall Dragon's effect to special summon a monster from your hand. So that's what you were going to do. You're going to trigger its effect as Chain Link 1 to special summon from hand. But then you're going to chain its effect to bounce cards. It's co-linked with two cards, so you get to bounce two monsters from your graveyard to your hand. And so you're going to bounce Planet Pathfinder, and you're going to bounce any monster that isn't a Dark and isn't a Cyburst, because you want to be able to make Eve. So we're going to bounce Lee to our hand. It could be Guard Dragon as well. Um, it could be a Shine Ball, for all that matters. Uh, all it needs to be is something that you can use with Link Kribo to make Eve with. But so, as Chain Link 2, the Firewall Dragon adds these back to our hand, and then resolving Firewall Dragon's effect to special as Chain Link 1, will special Planet Pathfinder to your center monster zone next to Firewall Dragon. So now the Planet Pathfinder is no longer being negated by Summon Sorceress. We've removed it from the field and summoned it again. So now from here, we're able to tribute the Planet Pathfinder to add the Kyoto Waterfront from our deck to our hand. So we've searched the Kyoto Waterfront. This card is essentially just terraforming that you can access out of your deck via the Summon Sorceress play lines. So that's actually really cool and really strong. But so now the Firewall Dragon's effect to Special Summon will trigger again because Planet Pathfinder left its zone, and you're going to Special Summon Lee the World Chalice Fairy in this instance here next to the Firewall Dragon. Well, actually, it doesn't even matter if it's next to the Firewall Dragon or not because we're not going to be triggering Firewall Special in this instance, but it would matter if, like, your hand had another monster you wanted to summon to commit to the combo sequence, so to make Ningirsu draw three cards instead of two, you could rotate a card in your hand, depending on what it was, out for another draw and make your hand just overall better and make the play have more monsters committed to it, uh, but that's just, like, semantics at this point. But so from here, we're going to activate this Kyoto Waterfront because we want to start getting counters on it, and so we're going to link away with the Lee and the Link Kribo, a Light Fairy and a Dark Cybers into Eeb, the World Chalice Priestess, and next to Firewall Dragon. Now Kyoto gets two counters on it because two monsters went to Grave. And now from here we have the Guard Dragon that we can utilize. So we're going to use the Guard Dragon, banishing itself, and we're going to special summon just any vanilla from Grave next to the Eeb. And so from here, what we're going to do is we're going to start setting up for the Ningirsu play by going with the vanilla into Imduk. You can either go up here, down here, over here. Doesn't really matter. All that does matter is that we get the third counter on Kyoto Waterfront. And what this summoning the Imduk up here would do is like if you had like Shade Brigandine or another vanilla in your hand that you summoned off Firewall during the last step, you could make another Imduk here and you'd be able to make an Ingirsu draw three play. Like I said, you can rotate one additional card in your hand as long as it's a monster resource around into making this an Ingirsu draw three. If like you have any other monster in your hand in addition to this two card combo, you just get to commit it to the field and make Ningirsu a draw three play instead because you can add a vanilla to your hand off firewall instead of Lee if the monster can be made with Link Kribo into Eeb and then you'd have the vanilla and then the guard dragon for two Imducks. Like there's a bunch of different factors that allow this to be expanded upon obviously. With most World Chalice combos that is usually the case. But, regardless of all those extenuating circumstances as to making this more complicated than it needs to be, what we're going to do from here with this combo that we've established is before we make Ningirsu, we're going to use the Kyoto Waterfront's effect to add Gamma Seal because it has three counters on it. So we're going to add the Gamma Seal from our deck to our hand. Adding it to our hand before we draw cards is actually pretty important, at least in my mind, especially since we're going to summon it rather early for this specific combo sequence. And thinning it out of your deck to where you don't draw it off Ningirsu is pretty powerful because it's basically, if you drew it off Ningirsu, it would be a dead card at that point. But, so, carrying on, we're going to use Imduk and the Nightmare Phoenix for a Link 3 play into Ningirsu the World Chalice Warrior over here, and we're going to structure our chain links as thus. This goes up to five counters, 
Ningirsu is a mandatory effect. When you draw cards, its draw effect is mandatory every time it's summoned. Uh, it's mandatory to trigger, so it will be Chain Link 1. We're going to make Firewall Dragon's effect Chain Link 2 to special summon from our hand because the Nightmare Phoenix left this zone. And then we're going to make the Imduk the World Chalice Dragon's Grave effect as Chain Link 3 to special a World Chalice name from our hand. So, resolving Imduk as Chain Link 3, we're going to special the World Chalice uh, over here. Off of the Firewall Dragon special, we're going to special the Gamma Seal next to it. And then the Ningirsu effect will resolve drawing two cards so we're back up to five cards in hand we've displaced and offset the two cards we committed into the combo with by just drawing two cards so that's really good we still have a five card hand uh, basically any play where you're able to draw the same number or more cards than what you committed into the play so like a two card combo if you can draw two cards that's completely fine because then you just offset the cost of the combo on top of all these extra cards that you have on the field so that's really good and neat but so what we have here is we've actually got a pretty uh, like strong ending point at this point before we even take it any further you've got world legacy world chalice on the field which acts as a form of disruption for your opponent's extra deck monsters you have a uh, gamma seal on the field with five counters which means that it negates two cards at minimum depending on how you play out your negation trees uh, but so we could take it a bit further than this and actually make the firewall dragon live which is what we're going to do because leaving this on the board it does have its merits but it's only as strong as your opponent's lack of reading skills are if your opponent picks up this card and reads it and comprehends it then they're just going to summon a monster and enter battle phase and attack over it and they waste their battle phase but they use that battle phase to like remove a form of disruption from your field so like that sometimes matters <laughs> just things like that but uh we can basically make the board better and make it uh make the disruption a bit more uh impactful so what we're going to do is in this combo sequence we haven't used lee's graveyard effect yet to add itself back to hand so what we're going to do is we're going to send the firewall dragon to grave as cost to add lee back to our hand and now from here we're going to link away with the world chalice and the eeb into orum above the ningirsu now the eeb's effect will trigger which will special the Lee from our hand, just in either this zone or this zone, it doesn't matter. And then you're going to use the Orum to tribute the Lee and revive the Firewall Dragon. And so now the Firewall Dragon is co-linked with the Ningirsu and is live again, so it can bounce one card. Now this will come into play whether you're using your Gamma Seal to negate cards, and then your opponent has to commit to some form of play from the extra deck, and then you can use Firewall to bounce that while you've gotten more counters. There's a lot of different factors that go into what you could be using the Firewall Dragon for, but for this combo, this is the bare minimum of what you want to be achieving with Venus plus World Legacy World Chalice. And you can also do different variations of this combo with Venus Lee, Lee Transmodify. Venus Brilliant Fusion is a really good one because that lets you search with Eva as well because you get to dump the Eva off Brilliant Fusion after you've put Fairies in Grave. So like you get to resolve that as well, making your play go further into the plusing territory. So like there's a lot of different things that you know come into play with how you can structure different play lines around this. But so this is a play that is something I've been doing a lot against Danger in my testing against that deck when I do decide to play this deck against that sort of matchup. It's pretty strong. It's a pretty strong card and pretty hard for Danger to deal with just the Gamma Seal. So it's one of those things that this is a uh, this is an idea that I've been messing around with and I just want to know what you guys think in the comments down below. And this is kind of like the way I think this deck can sort of take a step forward while also taking a step back because we are going back to the Gamma Seal days in some sort of uh, way, but we're basically like stepping forward as well because like we're playing Planet Pathfinder instead of just playing more field spells. And instead of having to draw the field spell raw every single time, we're actually able to control to access the field spell with the addition of a card like Planet Pathfinder. And obviously you'd still be playing a few copies of the field spell and gamma seal so if you did open the field spell then you would just be able to do the regular eva route as well off of your summon sorcerer's play and the planet pathfinder would just be a monster that if you drew it would just be a combo extender which is something that additional copies of the field spell like terraforming or a third copy of waterfront would not be so different things to sort of go into in terms of uh, variations and factors but like i said let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below as always but other than that as always guys thanks for watching like comment subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do subscribe here if you're new and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh content like this like the video if you want to see me make more videos like this let me know what you think about me going back to doing live card formatted combo tutorials instead of the Yu-Gi-Oh pro ones and all that sort of nonsense down below but so links are in the description to my twitch page as well as the channel's discord server if you're interested in either of those my live streams or the discord server then check them out they may have be of use to you but other than that as i've already said thanks for watching thanks for your time as usual guys and take care i'll see you in the next video